Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Luxury SUVs now come with the luxury of choice. Mercedes-Benz has gas, electric, and plug-in hybrid offerings. Learn more about the E-Class SUVs at your local dealer or at mbusa.com slash special offers. Before we get to Ed O'Neill, the actor who plays Donald Sterling in the uh, FX series called Clipped, and uh, the first two episodes uh, premiere today exclusively on uh, Hulu. So you think about the Clippers. Nobody wanted to play for the Clippers. Nobody cared about the Clippers. Their owner, Donald Sterling, uh, never built a winner. It felt like if you went to the Clippers, you were going into obscurity. Uh, he certainly had a bad rap and earned a bad rap for the person that he was. But he was still able to coach or uh, own the Clippers for a long time until a uh, couple of audio tapes were leaked to the media where he said some very disparaging things, and that was 2014. Well, Adam Silver swooped in. That's the first thing I think he did when he was on the job, and he said, you are going to lose your team, and uh, that's when Steve Ballmer came in and bought the Clippers. And uh, Ed O'Neill plays Donald Sterling, the disgraced former Clippers owner, and uh, it's the series called Clipped. And the first two episodes premiere today exclusively on Peacock. So Ed O'Neill, who gave us Modern Family, also gave us Married with Children, joins us on the program. What's it like playing a bad guy for a change? It's, I think all actors like playing bad guys. It's, uh, you know, you get to do things you don't normally get to do or say things you don't normally get to say. <clears throat> and um, a certain freedom and with no punishment at the end of the day, <laughs> get a paycheck. <laughs> but when you're known as, you know, when somebody sees you as Al Bundy and then they're going to yeah. see you as Donald Sterling, yeah. it's, uh, you know, when I talk to Brian Cranston about, you know, when he's on Malcolm in the middle and then you're doing breaking bad, like people have yeah. this like, whoa, this visceral reaction. Will people have that? Do you think, or you hope they have? Well, that? I, I think they certainly had it after married with children, you know, cause that ran 11 years. Uh, then I kind of got, I kind of got out of it a little bit. I, you know, modern family ran 11 years. So then they would identify me. It depended on where I was and who I would, you know, Vegas, it would be married. And then Beverly Hills would be modern family or, you know, uh, and so I kind of got out of that a little bit and it never bothered me to be honest with you. I never, I get, well, you know, I li came from New York. I did a lot of theater. And so I, uh, I just always felt like, well, I'm a hired gun. I do a part. It can be drama. It can be comedy. I don't care. Uh, and so that was part of the reason I decided to do this because I thought I haven't used a hundred percent for a long time. You know, the, com the light comedies, the family things can be great. And modern family certainly was a great show. But I thought I only used seventy percent of what I got, you know, you know, uh, and so I wanted to, I wanted to challenge myself a bit, and I thought this is certainly a challenge. What part of the script did you go, uh oh, or wow? I I I like the whole thing. I, the six. You but, know, I but think something I read dangerous four. or something that kind of made you nervous that you were going to have to say something. Uh, no. No. Uh, maybe it should have, but I, I don't think so. I, I think it, because I know, you know, it, it's a story that I think was entertaining and it was, uh, it had a good pace and it had good, well, I knew, I some, knew some of the actors coming in. I knew Lawrence Fishburne from New York. Uh, I knew of Jackie, uh, Jackie Weaver's work. I'd seen several of her movies, kind of the Meryl Streep of Australia. I had worked with Corbin Bernson in a movie years ago called uh, Disorganized Crime. So I knew some of the players and I thought, well, it's good company. It's good writing. It's good paycheck. It's six and I'm out. It's not going to be, uh, you know, 11 years. <laughs> Let's go. What's tougher, comedy or drama? I don't think either one. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know it's, 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 if you're funny, comedy is not that hard. If you're not funny, it's, it's a bad job. <laughs> when do you know you're funny? 
when they laugh. <laughs> but are you trying to crack up the crew or your fellow actors? I, you know, it depends. I mean, I, you know, when you're trying to be funny, it doesn't matter. I don't think you could do it on the street corner. Uh, and the drama, you know, all the best actors that I've ever watched and enjoyed are kind of funny. You know, Lawrence Olivier, Brando was kind of funny, could be. De Niro, you know, all those guys can be kind of funny. Did you work with Pacino, one of your first acting gigs? Yeah. Was that cruising? Yeah. yeah. Did you see yeah. in Pacino what we eventually saw in Pacino? Well, he was already famous. He had already done The Godfather. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, as, uh, you know, that part. And he, uh, he was well on his way. So, yeah, you knew he was uh, a special actor. What was Brando like? I never met Brando. Oh, okay. Uh, I just uh, I just referenced him. Oh. I never met him. He didn't do married. He didn't do a cameo on Married with Children. No. No, he did not. Of course Who, he did. Brando? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, we're ta talking to Ed O'Neill, the actor Married with Children, Modern Family, and he plays Donald Sterling in Clipped. I was also, uh, the older we get, the better we were when we were an athlete. So, uh, you know, nobody's around to remember that I wasn't as good as I tell people that I was. <laughs> but so you played college football and then get drafted by the Steelers. Well, I wasn't drafted. Okay, so you're I was, I was, a, a, I was a paid. I was a paid free agent. Okay, I say paid, not much, but it was Chuck Knoll's first year, and I was uh, coming from Youngstown. I played for Ohio U. Uh, kind of got uh, th that didn't work out for me too too well, and then I just I didn't care for the coaches, and then uh, I went to Youngstown State. That didn't work out for me too well either. I, I, again, it was a coach. Of course it was. <laughs> I started to ask myself, I wonder if this is my fault, you know? <laughs> and uh, it may well have been. And then I got picked up by, th there was a scout that, that, you know, they have these NFL scouts, at least they used to, who cover like five teams. Uh, and this guy was, the Steelers was one of the teams. I think Detroit, and I forget the rest, but he, uh, he contacted me when I was still at OU and I told him I was going to go to Youngstown state and he kept an eye on me apparently. So that when I, after my senior year, uh, he said, we're going to, you know, we're going to call you uh, night of the draft. We're not going to draft you, but we we want you to come try out. So I did. That was how it worked. How was it meeting but, mean Joe green? I never met Joe because I came in with the uh, with the rookies naturally, and the, some vets were there, but they were there for reasons, you know, like working on a knee or you know what I mean. So uh, there were some vets there, <clears throat> but Joe hadn't come in yet. I think it may have been a contract thing yet or something. I don't remember. But uh, let's see, the quarterback was uh, Terry Hanrady, Notre Dame, from Notre Dame, yeah. And then Dick Shiner, they got Shiner from the Giants. And I was trying to make outside linebacker, which I, we didn't have an outside linebacker in college. We played a 5-4. And I played middle guard. I played tight end, defensive end, no outside linebacker. So I wasn't used to playing standing up. I was on a you know, four-point kind of thing. Yeah. So, and I didn't know the, key, I didn't know the keys flat coverage, you know, all that stuff. But I, over the tight end, I knew how to whack somebody. <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't know the position. So I'm trying to make the team and learn the position. And it, hey, that's tough. What was it like? Rocky, meeting? Rocky Blyer was in Vietnam. That's I'm giving you the time frame. And then Bradshaw got drafted the following next year, year, the next year. Yeah. Did Chuck Knoll know your name? I think he did. I could be wrong. <laughs> You'd like to think that he knew you. He your was name. very nice to me the day I got cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'll tell you a funny thing that I actually, I think I blocked it out of my mind because I think I just remembered this recently. And that was that when I was talking to him towards the end of our little discussion, you know, and he was telling me how much he liked me and so forth. He said, listen, I talked to Cole Herrick at, with the Eagles, and if you want to try out, they, they need linebackers. We'll rent you a car. We were down at St. Vincent's College, 
and you can drive up there. They'll give you a good look. But I got to know right now because they got to fill that. And I thought maybe 10 seconds. And I said, no, nah, I'm out. I was surprised myself that I said that. And he, he seemed surprised. He said, you don't want to? I said, no, I'm done. Thanks. But didn't you have Bradshaw on? Was he on uh, Married? Yeah. A couple he, was on Modern, he was on Married and, and Modern. Modern Family. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Terry and I are pretty good friends. Do you remember the first read through with uh, Modern Family? Like, or, well, which one made you a little bit more nervous of how long is this going to last? Married or Modern? Well, I didn't think Married would last over, you know, two or three shows. And I think it was, I think it was only bought for like six. And then, uh, because I thought we'd be canceled any, at any minute, at any time. And that went on for three or four or five years. Because, you know, we weren't, we weren't the darling of the critics, you know, with, with the material we were, we were slinging around, you know, <laughs> but it was funny. I thought it was funny. Not all of it, but a lot of it. So I, but I, so we were like, I used to, I think I used the, like the little show that could, we just kept chugging along, you know, until finally we got up around 11 and then they, they gave us the boot. Do people actually think modern? I knew I thought modern would be a hit the first time I read the script. Oh wow! Do I said this show is a hit. Do people actually think you're married to uh, Sophia? I don't think so. Oh no, who would believe that? <laughs> well, yeah, but you're a good actor. We you, thank you, we, thank you, Dan. We were supposed to believe that on the show. You know what? I I credit her with a lot of that because she really did make me seem you know like she did find me uh, sexy <laughs> or lovable in some way you know even though the the structure of it was i was a wealthy guy and she needed a, a father and someone who could provide for her and her her uh, little boy so in that regard it worked and you know she's great by the way sophia and i are dear friends that sounds like a typical Hollywood story where there's an older rich guy and then there's a younger woman. That's Hollywood, isn't it? Has that ever happened before? I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, good luck uh, being the bad guy there. Great to talk to you. And thanks, thanks for joining Darren. us. Okay. Thank Take care, you. Ed. Nice meeting you. Ed O'Neill, actor. He's not married to Sofia Vergara in real life, but gave me the impression that, okay, maybe he could pull this off there. I like the Steelers stories. Uh, going to camp there back in the, the late 60s. Missed out on Mean Joe Green, but uh, got to meet Chuck Knoll, Terry Bradshaw. So the uh, show, uh, they have two episodes that are available on Hulu. It's called Clipped, and it's about Donald Sterling and the Clippers when he was stripped of uh, his team.